الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم My dear respected brothers and sisters Inshallah ta'ala We're going to do tafsir Al-Sheikh Abdurrahman Ibn Nasr al-Sa'di Rahimahullahu ta'ala And this tafsir Walillahi alhamd is very simple. Tafsir al Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Sa'di Rahimahullah. And we are still studying Surah Al Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladina kafaru yunfiquna amwalahum liyasuddu an sabili lahi fasa yunfiquna ha tumma takunu alayhim hasratan tumma yuglabun. Wal ladina kafaru ila jahanna ma yuhsharun. The disbelievers spend their wealth to hinder others from Allah's path. And they will continue to spend on it. In the end, it will become a source of intense regret for them. They will be overcome. And those who disbelieve will be herded to hell. The Sheikh said, furthermore, Allah declares that whoever reverts from Islam and adopts infidelity means kufr, and continues in that state until he dies as a disbeliever. His deed will come to nothing in this world and in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. Mm. Whatever good deeds he may have done during his life will be in vain as they will lack the compulsory authentication of Islam for their acceptance and they will be the inhabitants of the hellfire to abide in it forever. May Allah save us. The meaning of this noble verse also indicates that whoever returns back to Islam after adopting infidelity, <coughs> then the good deeds he has done prior to becoming an infidel would be restored. Similarly, whoever repents from his bad deeds and makes a resolve to never repeat them, his previous good deed will also be returned to him. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if someone was a disbeliever, and then they became Muslim, then all the bad deeds that they have done in the past will be all wiped out. Allahu Akbar. And not only that, the good deeds that they have done, they get to keep those good deeds. Allahu Akbar. And not only Islam, also Al-Hijrah, migration. Uh, when um, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, radiyallahu an, he came to give allegiance to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Messenger of Allah extended his hand to him to give a pledge of allegiance. But Abdullah ibn Umar did not extend his hand. So the Prophet ﷺ, he told him, why? He said, the Messenger of Allah, I have a condition. Before I give you a pledge of allegiance, I want to put a condition. He said, what is your condition? He said, that Allah forgives me. Because Abdullah ibn Umar, you know, he was one of those that hated the Prophet ﷺ before Islam. So he wanted to make sure that Allah forgave him. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, أَمَا عَلِمْتَ يَا عَمْرُ أَنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ يَجُبُّ مَا قَبْلَهُ وَالْهِجْرَةُ تَجُبُّ مَا قَبْلَهَا وَالْحَجُّ يَجُبُّ مَا قَبْلَهُ So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't you know, ya Amr, that Islam wipes off everything a person did in the past. Allahu Akbar. As Allah said in Surah Al-Anfal, قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Say to those who disbelieve, if they desist from their kufr and all that, everything that they have done in the past will be forgiven, will be wiped off. So he said, Don't you know, Ya Amr, that Islam wipes off everything a person in the past? And migration from the land of the kuffar to the land of, the, of Islam wipes off everything a person in the past. And also hajj, subhanallah. Naam. 
and also when someone performs Hajj correctly according to Al Kitab or Sunnah without any riya, without any show, show off and the like, sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the sunnah of the, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this wipes off all the sins. As a matter of fact, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever performs hajj and he does not commit any sins, only evil or anything like that, he will come back from hajj with a clean slate. We'll come back from Hajj with a clean, like a baby who's just uh, like a newborn baby, basically. Look, subhanAllah, at the beauty of this religion. But on the contrary, if someone, well, Billah, apostated from Islam and, uh, and he, well, Billah, reverted back to Al Kufr, Billah, then this person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept his good deed even if they were like as big as mountains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept it because he destroyed the iman. The iman is gone. There's no iman. He doesn't have any foundation. He doesn't have any foundation because the tawheed is no longer there. The iman is no longer there. And then Allah, after that, He said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Those who believed and those who emigrated and fought in Allah's cause are the ones who hope for Allah's mercy. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. All three devotions described in this noble verse are the essence of happiness and servitude towards Allah. These are the deeds that identify whether a person within his life is gaining profits or generating losses. Not enough can, can be said about the reverence of faith who can ever accurately describe such a virtue that is dividing line between the pious and the evil ones. And distinguishing factor between the people of paradise and the people of hell, this undoubtedly is the only fate that if someone embraces, all his good deeds will be accepted. But if he disbelieves in it, then none of his pious deeds or act of worship will be accepted. As for the hijra migration, it is an act of migrating away from one's, one's hometown or place of birth solely for the sake of gaining the pleasure of Allah. So it should be for that. It's very important because some people, they migrate for a job, they migrate for, you know, they, they don't have that intention, you know. So it has to be, that intention has to be there. Sincerely for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus, a muhajir, immigrant, is one who, for the purpose of attaining Allah's closeness and upholding his sacred religion, accepts and endures the hardship of migration. Because the migration is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. You're going to go through some trials and tribulation while you are traveling and when you get there and, and things like that. So you have to be patient. Leaving behind his family, his property, his homeland, his friends, and his relatives. So it's not easy. Look at the muhajirin, Allahu Akbar, the, the muhajirin of Mecca, the companions, Ridwanullahi alayhim, who accepted Islam and migrated with the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they left everything behind, Allahu Akbar. But look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exchanged for them that which is better. Exchanged for them that which is better. Additionally, jihad is the designation of, of violently, uh, violently making unconditional effort to fight against the enemies of Islam, upholding Allah's divine religion and destroying satanic ideologies. Jihad is the greatest deed from among the pious deeds, and its reward is also the greatest of all reward. Jihad is the best and the greatest means of spreading Islam. 
humiliating the idolaters and keeping the lives, properties, and families of the Muslims safe. Whoever performs these three deeds, despite the hardship and difficulties inherent in them, is bound to gain the strength to easily perform other devotions and good deeds. There are, these are indeed the people who are the most deserving of Allah's blessings because they are indeed, because they have offered a valid reason which will surely warrant his blessing and pleasure. The noble verse offers a strong proof that making a use of the means of devotions is the only way to hope for Allah's blessing. Hopes which are accompanied with laziness and without utilizing the means are just incompetence. Allahu Akbar. So the hope has to be coupled with action. It cannot be ca- coupled with laziness, you know. Someone hopes for Jannah but does not work for Jannah. It's not going to work like that. Vain hopes and deception. Now, vain hopes and de- deception and are indicative of a person's foolishness and lack of willpower. Subhanallah. Example of such a person is the one who hopes of having children without ever marrying or hopes for a fall crop without first sowing the seeds and watering them. It's not going to happen like that. Uh, Another important point to note here is that Allah's decree for the mercy of Allah points to the fact that whatever pious deed a believer brings to Allah, he must not solely rely on them for attaining paradise. Rather, he must pin his hope on Allah's blessing through his kindness and benevolence. So basically, all the good deed that we do cannot be uh, the mean for us to enter Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, these are means, yes, these are means, inshallah, because Allah commanded us to do that. But entering Jannah is by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to put us to accountability, all our deeds will become in vain. For example, we cannot pay him back for the blessing of Iman. That we are believers. We believe in him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are not polytheists. This is a great ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can never pay him back for this. You know? All the good deeds that we do in comparison with this ni'mah is going to be nothing. So we are left with the mercy of Allah and His benevolence. With His benevolence. He must maintain the hope that His deed will be accepted by Allah and He will forgive him of his sins and conceal his mistakes. For this very reason, Allah says, Allah is most forgiving. That is, whoever repents with sincerity, Allah will pardon his sins. Most merciful means his benevolence his benevolence spreads all spreads all over all existed things and his kindness is common to all living things this noble verse is also a proof that whoever exert efforts to perform the above mentioned deeds will gain Allah's forgiveness surely devotion erases evil deeds and when a faithful gains Allah's pleasure, forgiveness, then all his difficulties in this world and in the hereafter will vanish. His difficulties are in fact a result of a person's evil deeds. So when these evil deeds will be pardoned, their negative effect on a person will also vanish. Allahu Akbar. When the faithful are successful in gaining Allah's mercy, they in fact then gain all goodness of this world and the hereafter. 
Rather, the above mentioned devotions are also part of the blessing of Allah on them. If Allah had not granted them the ability of performing these deeds, they neither could have success regarding them. Look at this. If Allah did not give you the ability to perform these deeds, then you would never have done this. Mm. So everything is from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Even the good deed that you do. If it was not for Allah, you would not be doing that. Nor the intention or ability to perform them. If Allah's support would not have been with them, they couldn't have completed this deed. And so they would not have been acceptable. Thus Allah is the one who is the beholder of all benevolence and authority. Only he can generate an opportunity for a good deed. And only he can grant someone the capability to perform a good deed. Allahu Akbar. This is amazing. Wallahi. So everything we do is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that is good that we do. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you hidayah, this is from him. If he gives you success to go and perform the five daily prayers, he gives you success, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give charity, to fast, to do good deed. And other than that, this is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep these blessings for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and grant us Jannah al firdaus Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.